Okay, so we'll, we'll dive in. Um, I've got a very large two and a half inch brush and really I just want to flood the canvas. So, so I'm working on a very small canvas, uh, in my eyes anyway, uh, and just flood the color in. I've started with a very light green base color. It's basically emerald with um, like a cadmium yellow and some white. Uh, so this color is pretty good for portraits because it will just uh, contrast against the warmer colors. So we shall dive in and see what happens. So looking for this kind of uh, ochre color, uh, it's never quite that simple. So yellow ochre, cadmium, uh, azo yellow, some burnt sienna, some red, orange, a bit of magenta, a bit of um, uh, ultramarine violet, uh, a bit of blue, maybe even a bit of green. So I've got quite a bit of color. Um, just run these in a little bit. Maybe there's a bit too much of the blue coming through. So yeah, the first few colors you pick up uh, is all going to be trial and error anyway. Um, so something like that. A bit more, might even add some white, but as soon as I put white in, it's going to kill the color off. So we just want to maintain um, a bit of richness. Okay, so maybe start normally top to bottom, but I think we'll, we'll start from the bottom up uh, there and just drag that color down like so. So the color streak in, you get this lovely meld um, of color and you get a bit of streakiness. Just drag that along. Because he's got a very rugged face, maybe even drag the brush in a couple of directions just to, to show, um, I was gonna say showcase a bit of texture, but uh, it's really just to reflect his personality because um, I just think he's um, not pretty. <laughs> so you don't want to over smoothen uh, stuff, uh, so something like that. So I've just added a bit more green. Uh, that green then, as it starts to meld in with the red and orange, will start to go brown. So I've got something of a greeny brown there, which I think is quite interesting. That there. So this can be lighter. Uh, maybe even make these marks drag out the shape. Bit more yellow, bit more orange, bit of white this time, just to pastelize the shade. And we'll just drag this up. Maybe even pull it down. Bit of yellow. So. I guess if you were painting normally, or maybe a slightly more generic portrait, uh, you would contour the face um, with the marks you, you utilize. Well, what I mean by that is you'd kind of the, follow the line of the forehead. Um, I, I like this initial just flurry of color just because I, I find it interesting prior to you making it look like um, whoever it is you're painting. A bit, bit more in the, white, uh, in the way of white there. So yeah, just, just be careful of the white because it does take color away. Uh, so something like that. So I've not done this painting before and I've got to get used to where things are. So just a mark there, nice bit of shadow. Um, it's always good doing contrasting uh, light and dark uh, or color something like that. While I've got this light shade, we'll just locate things like well, the ears roughly going to be there. Um, so again, working slightly small, I, I just think it's quite a quite a change um, because I, I still want to use big brushes that will showcase the marks, um, and you can still obviously use marks even working on a smaller scale. Okay, just adding some light bits there. Okay, so obviously you've got to find out where the features are. And the way I like to do that is by blocking in um, eye socket. So his eye is going to be about there. And we'll maybe do a drag up. Oh, a bit of white coming through there. White there. And then where the eyebrow is, just drag that along. And I could do, just do the same there. We've got rather pronounced eyebrows, uh, something like that. And the same dark actually could be used to maybe locate some of the other um, interesting shades. Just uh, where the nostril is, just dark there. And just where the mouth is, uh, it's quite a distance. So if you maybe have done a lot of portrait painting, 
you're, you're probably going to be used to seeing uh, proportions, um, something like that. Okay, so the eye, and he's got lovely, um, yeah, lovely character, full face. Uh, maybe just drag that along there. Just want the green to come out a little bit more. So I really like that phthalo green, so we'll do that. There. When I've done uh, portraits like this in front of a live audience, I, I think there's an initial shock at just the fact that it bears no relation to um, who I'm meant to be painting. But again, I, I kind of think a portrait should also be a painting. So it's not necessarily about just creating a perfect likeness. It's also going to look like an interesting um, painting. So a bit of blue, a bit of green there, and I can just start to shape the face. Uh, maybe a bit of purple even. Uh, there's some nice darks, so we're looking for some of that over there. Just drag that down. And we can use the same dark purple, maybe just about there. Because he's got this mop of uh, very gray hair. Um, something like that. There. Uh, okay, so a couple of things. Could put the hair in or an indication. In fact, I'll, yeah, I'll do that next. Okay, so gonna do the hair, gonna use some pale blue and just drag that around, just add a little bit of the ochre colour with it. Drag that up. So uh, the blue will then contrast against the flesh colour. Um, and it's a way of just making sure you're not just doing uh, lots of beige and greys and earthy tones. So it just, just will make the colour flag up that little bit more. Uh, when you do a painting, obviously, certainly when I do a painting, I'm conscious of not creating lots of sharp edges because I'm, I mean, I quite like that dollop there. Uh, maybe just skim it in a little bit. Uh, yeah, so I want the edges to break up that little bit, just where he's got some grey in his eyebrows. And obviously where the eye is, we'll just maybe think about putting a bit of blue around here. And just on the side there. And obviously very good to echo some colour, so maybe drag some of the light blue up and around here. And I'm assuming he's got makeup on as well. Um, so you need to see slightly beyond that and we'll put some colour maybe just above the mouth. Uh, and actually with where the highlight is, we'll put some blue. Put some blue around there. Like so. Uh, okay, so the next thing could be some highlights, but before I do that, I'm going to go for some dark. I'm just going to go down a uh, brush size. I just want to indicate the eyes that little bit more because I, I don't want to spend too long on this painting just to showcase, like, say, the, the speed of, of doing some of these things. Uh, so maybe a block of dark there. Just try, try and get. So I'm using fairly thick paint, which means I need to override some of it so I need even thicker paint um, either so we we'll go in here so I'm trying to look at just the line that forms the eyelid and then just do a drag across so this eye will be a bit darker um, so I've got something like I've got um, my phthalo blue mixed in with the greeny grey colour, just skim that in a little bit. The eyes are obviously fairly important, so I'm just, just keen to spend a little bit of time over here. Um, okay, just some darks in here. So some of this can merge in, I almost don't need to overwork this eye, though, I'll just kind of maybe do something with it. Um, again, just need to look at the measurements a little bit. Um, Yeah, so this area is going to be fairly light. Make sense of that. Quite tricky trying to nail something in one go. And if you were thinking of trying this kind of technique out, you might want to have some kind of outline. 
I, I so enjoyed the painting side of it that I, I, with a lot of these little demonstrations, I'm, I'm keen to just get you enjoying looking at paint being spread around in a, in a kind of liberal kind of manner, rather than get bogged down with the technical aspect of it about gridding things out and, and drawing them um, to the letter. So there is a issue, if you like, when you do some of these things that it might not look like the person, but you know, if you're enjoying the painting, then you should just go for it. Um, okay, so just concentrating a little bit on things like that. I, I tend to look at one thing, but my peripheral vision is just aware that, yeah, how things will link together. Uh, the other thing I'm incredibly keen about is leaving quite a bit to just just for the viewer if you like to um, fill in the blanks so leaving some of the green uh, not over there I really I'm not overly keen on doing ears um, so things like that I will underplay a little bit. obviously I'll do something but I won't go mad uh, maybe a bit of dark there um, I love the green there but just um, I love how the hair kind of breaks up uh, like so, so just wanted some dark because I intend to put some strong white there um, and just drag some stuff around like so, quite like that blue so that could just play a part. Maybe okay, so to a clean brush, a two, inch, a two inch brush and we'll go back to what we started with which is all those lovely O3 colours. Uh, Azo yellow medium. Actually, there's Azo yellow deep as well in there, but it, they're so close. Um, some of the the yellows you get, they vary a little bit more, but they're very close. I don't know why I put both of them in there, but say Louis. Uh, okay, a bit of orange. So I've got the permanent um, light green in there, and. Okay, so I've created um, quite a few mid-light tints with the original colours uh, using um, azo yellow medium, orange, uh, some of the lighter green, a bit of white, and we're just going to start contouring the face. And again, a two-inch brush, clean brush. And we're just going to drag the paint around. And, and I'm, I've got a fair load on my brush, but I'm just going to gently skim over the surface, so maybe the paint would just crackle that little bit more. Uh, acrylic dries a little bit darker, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more white into this color again. Maybe even put some yellow, lemon yellow in, uh, back to the orange. And there's gonna be a nice strong highlight uh, going up there. So there's some blue there, but that's gonna be just lifted off a little bit and just drag that across there and just down like that color just feel i just got to vary it a bit more orange this time back into the yellow yeah so the issue with the white is that you get the pastelized color which really I mean, obviously, his uh, skin tone is light, but you do, you do take some colour away up there. So there's an area in between the initial colour I applied and the highlight, and I'm I'm going to add things to link those areas up, but that will be coming. So you, you've kind of got to live with that for a little while up until you get to the point where you can then add those bridging tints or bridging colours. Okay, just drag. Trying to avoid, to some extent, getting sucked into wrinkles and uh, what have you. You can almost worry about that later, just to start with, just get, um, just get these blocks in. Bit of green over here, and just 
trying to create some interesting light tints. Like I said, the yellow is actually playing a fair, fair part here. So as I progress with the painting, I, I kind of slightly calm down my range of color options because I've utilized them early on and I'm not looking to go too mad with the color choice. Okay, so a little bit of light there. So there's gonna be even stronger highlights in this. This is purely a way of just locating the initial structures, very strong light there. Uh, again, just where his nose is. Uh, and I'm gonna try and utilize some of the color dye I started with. Bit of orange, bit of red, mixing a little bit. And this nose needs to be, yeah, i just put a bit more red there. Just skim over it a little bit. And again, I'll, I'll drop a nice strong highlight on there at some point. And just on this side, there's a bit of light coming through. So this hefty quantity of paint does mean that the painting looks fairly substantial and also gets the job done slightly quicker um, which I'm always keen to do um, as I'm taken with a subject. I, I want it to get out into the open as soon as possible. Um, so the more inroads I can make early on, the better. So this will be light. A bit more in the way of red. So just pop that in. A bit too much. So as long as you change it early on enough, It'll be fine. Okay, so we'll move along here. So it's got a bit of a drawline here. Just get the yellow going. Got to be careful as you lay these marks on not to disrupt the base layer too much. The gamble is if you do it when it's dry, so for example, if I allowed the initial layer to, to settle down a lot more so it's completely dry and then go into it, uh, there wouldn't be much melding of colour and at least by doing this there's a potential for some colours to meld in so if you're an oil painter you'll know that a lot because there's constant blending going on but with acrylic painting if you start to play with the paint it will go very dull on you and I'm using mainly student quality paints as well so I really don't want to do too much disruptive mark making or blending with what I have. So the ear is going to be very light. I'll come back to that just while I'm in the mouth area. Just added a bit more green. So we've got a little bit of a, a line there. A bit more white. A bit more orange. When you do portraits for fun, uh, and not for commissions, you can relax a little bit more because you're, I guess, not going to be judged um, or scrutinised too much. So, yeah, you can just extend that brush out a little bit more and just enjoy the process. But, so there's quite a bit of assertive um, brush marks going in and again that's just good for the for the acrylic paint um, because it won't be laboured okay we'll just move in here let me get the red going a little bit more on this side and over here Again, just get the yellow going. If you use white and you take on all these different colors, at some point the color starts to neutralize and pastelize into a, a bit of a gunge of uh, 
color just one dull shade so you just got to make sure you occasionally just perk it up get the vibrancy back in touch more red just skim that up so yeah there's a dark line running there so as i'm making these marks i'm just making mental notes about what needs to happen okay and the mouth has got a bit more red we'll lighten might put that brush down always good to have a handy bit of tissue in case you need to just sort of get the paint out of your brush it's either that or you're, you're going to clean the brush and at this stage i don't really want to um, wash them wash all the color out okay so just okay, just make a few marks here so in the past I would have tried to blend a lot of these in and you know just go down the, the, the usual well-trodden path of just just kind of playing playing the paint and just creating incredibly smooth blends it's just he's got the kind of face that I really don't want to start smoothing out because that's part of his character. Um, okay, so maybe we can use a couple of bits of red and orange. Meld it in a little bit with what I've got. And maybe use this color for the mouth. It's a little bit more pinky, but um, I'll be doing a few bits on the mouth. There's some stronger highlights coming through eventually just wanted to lighten that up um, that's maybe a bit severe but when the highlights go in it should hold together a little bit better okay so a bit severe there so again I've got quite a concoction of different tints here so we can just kind of block some of this in over here and just drag that out And that's over there. Okay, just anywhere else I can utilize this. There's a nice soft tint going on there, just in here. And it's literally just something just to sit in between the highlight. And like I said, what I began with, maybe just drawing that up. A bit more in the way of red. A bit of blue just uh, just to tone down and just gotta be a little bit careful uh, like so especially when you're using a lot of paint and this actually just juts out at the back a little bit more in fact that could play a big part in some other parts as well so just use a bit of red a uh, bit of purple just to darken it up in with my original mix and so when that goes in it just gives me a slightly darker component color and up there maybe around the eyes and tempted to do some stuff uh, again i don't want it to run into kind of just drawing lots of wrinkles um, Okay, so a lot of white, and once I do the hair, I'll come in and put the highlights in the face as well, and we'll end with just pulling out the features. So a lot of white, a bit of um, brilliant blue it's called. Uh, it almost doubles up as a cerulean blue, uh, which is like more common. What you do find with manufacturers, sometimes they don't always have the same kind of colors. Okay, so we'll just drag a few marks over here so this blue becomes a little bit of a base and it's going to just flicker through and over here okay, just get a little of that blue running in and just to the back here and just give it some color so that's quite a strong tone there I'll need to just lose some of that and then again, it's very, very white. 
over here and just drag some of that up like so and yeah I've got quite a few brushes quite a few brushes here so I can just get some of those early ones and just to draw some of these colors in and just on the top here and a few little strands running here and there so I could go back to this and uh, just utilize some of the so if I run it into some of the beige you start to create a bit of a gray uh, which obviously is slightly more akin to naturalistic hair color but again we're just trying to heighten some stuff Stain light over here and what I might be I'll be like that mark there so I might do that similarly with the hair at the top there and again even at this stage I could go in with an even stronger white at the very end um, okay so we'll use the same color in the flesh it just needs to be lifted a little bit more so um, a bit of yellow just get that blue in it went slightly corrupt when the brown went in but again this will be a light tint that will be manipulated into a stronger highlight after so we'll put this in here and it just runs across there and just up here and in there so I'm starting to just pay attention to some of the drawing aspects and some, maybe some of the little marks that are sort of more relevant. Just a little bit of yellow. Just run that mark in like so. And there's a nice highlight just, just lifting up that eyebrow a little bit. So just slightly higher. And just in here, that highlight is slightly more pronounced. It's ever so subtle. And like I say, with acrylic, um, especially with scenes with strong light, uh, they work really, really well. But the subtlety, you've got to measure it a little bit more. And even compensate, like I say, for when it dries, it will dry a little bit darker. There. quite like the idea of savoring some of the challenge um, because you know that the highlight will go some way in really drawing out this side of the face so we can be quite brave about putting that light in and just drag that around got that Cap um, azo yellow coming in as well, so that's going to pale off just around the eyes. It's just really picks out. Um, I've got a slightly smaller brush, like one inch brush. For some people, that's tiny, that's really big. Um, for me, it's tiny. A bit more in the way of orange and yellow. I've noticed when I do these videos, my I think I mentioned this in one of my other videos. I'm slightly holding my breath and then letting a breath out. Uh, simply because I like the idea of when I make a fairly important mark, I'm doing it at the same time as I'm just concentrating on my breathing and just allowing the breath to come out at the same time as making the mark. I've got no idea if that makes any sense to anyone. Okay, so strong like that. And a bit of light on this side. Again, get that yellow going. And yeah, so there's a bit of a... bit of a line where the eye socket is. And he's obviously got some amazing wrinkles, which we're not going to do too many of. It's one of the problems when people paint old people. They just salivate at the idea of just getting a little brush, brush out to draw little lines because uh, they just think that's going to 
be the thing that's going to make it amazing. But actually, I've done a few, but I'm really trying to curtail my enthusiasm. Yeah, so that area is quite important. So I'm going to probably spend a little bit of time here, but we'll start with some blocks. Down here, bit of blue. Up there. And okay, we'll just move on again fairly quickly. So the, the nose will get a strong highlight there. Again, maybe some of that is quite harsh. And we'll put a strong light in here with the yellow and just run a mark down and over here okay so this is slightly rounded on this side don't really do a rounded stroke it's going to be one block next to another Okay, and we'll move along here. Again, there's a little shimmer of a highlight there. And yeah, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, so a little bit of structure there. And there's obviously some lovely little light at play, fairly supple, just skimming the top of the mouth. Uh, that's a little bit too much. And then uh, just over here okay and that's quite a strong shape there so light so the paint starts to thicken up as you go in with these layers so there is an optimum amount of layering you can do so I would think a couple of highlights at the end would be it you would not then go back backwards and forwards blending things in because it would just be a little bit destructive to the painting. Just skim that. Okay, and the mouth is obviously a lot lighter, so we'll just lighten that. I've got some magenta, uh, yeah, primary magenta, which I will use because it's a bit pinky here. I'm going to use some dark in here later on. So as I work around the face, it's kind of like a countdown to what the final marks are. Obviously, I mean, if you've got a little brush out, you could just pepper this all day. Okay, so yeah, just move on. There's a highlight there. Just around here. Yeah, the ears are just so not too bothered with. Okay, so we'll do some stuff with the eyes just to clarify a little bit of information. It's always nice to spend a bit of time uh, on these focal points just to really create a, a bit of a hook. So I've got some kind of tint in there and I've just picked up it. I'm just going by what I can see on my palette that looks appropriate. It's not, it's a white of the eyes, but obviously it's not white. And I'm going to be fairly gentle about this skin. Like so. Hopefully in one go and just, I mean, I'll probably have to just provide a little bit more information. And just drag that along. And on the other eye as well, I can just make out so something maybe slightly darker. Um, when I say dark, obviously it's a fairly light tint. There's a bit more blue coming through there. Okay, so that dark needs to kind of just be reinstigated a little bit. And this could almost be a bit darker. Uh, okay, we're going to highlight some of that. Highlight the eyes, put some darks in. Um, yeah, just around the eyes, just a um, bit of yellow, bit of orange, bit of red, a little bit more red because I just noticed just around here, it's just a little 
There's a little bit of red coming through. It should sit fairly well against the blue. And just see a little bit of information down here. Again, just trying to penetrate a thick dollop of paint here. Okay, it's probably a little bit more than I was looking to apply. Just skim that down. And actually the start can just be applied to the eye on this side because you can see a little bit of colour coming from them. Yeah, it would certainly help if I let this settle down, but good stuff to do. A little bit more light. And yeah, it's got some grey in them, as I have in mind. There. And on this side as well, they're, boy, they're huge. Um, okay, so maybe end with some really strong lights and a couple of stronger darks just to tie things together. Um, so I think we'll do the darts first. Um, I'll use this little brush. So I've got Prussian blue, my, my darkest, the darkest color on my palette. And I'll put some uh, of the dark turquoise. Um, and we are just going to shape maybe a little bit in the mouth. Part of the thing is I, Obviously, some of this is in shadow, so I can't quite make out what's going on. So rather than do outlines, I'm looking to just block in some of this dark. It's just slightly more easier to contend with. Nice dark just running along. So I know sometimes when I do some of these demos, um, I'm aware that on camera, it probably... Um, looks minute, all these little touches, um, but I'm just going through the process that I might go through um, when I do a painting. And you can, you can definitely fast forward through some of the slightly duller bits. Like the Right there. Again, just moving up to these areas. A bit of the red on this side. Just going to add, well, just while well, I've got this dark colour. There. Glue back in. Again, just I'm just going to finish off on this side. Um, yeah, just uh, trying to make the most of what colours I got left on my my palette. And um, just comes down. And on this side, yeah, I I can kind of live with most of what's going on in there. Just getting a little bit of tone just thin here. A little bit more just to darken it. Just while you got light there just to have a little bit more on show. Here's a good idea. Okay and just maneuvering around. And up here, yeah, so a little bit of shadow here and there. Just show a bit of, of a collar. Over here. A bit more. Final marks. 